Good morning, guys. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Scobie Books. Thank you so much for purchasing my books. I'd like to show you today how we can make these little match boxes. Actually, these are the small match boxes, and I'd like to show you how we can decorate them. This is more on the Victorian side, and this one, I've got that sugar coating on the inside, and on the back, now the front I have some pearls, some lace, and some silk ribbon, so I didn't put any glitter on there. Uh, I also left the side part open for matches, which I did not do on the other two. So, without further ado, I would like to show you how we can make these, and I'll tell you what steps you'll need to take no matter which one of these projects you would like to do. The first thing we're going to need are these smaller match boxes. This is a coffee filter that I scrunched up, dipped the ends into a mixture of acrylic paint and water. This was dry. I then stamped it. I put it in the oven at 170 degrees for about 20 minutes just to make sure that that ink wasn't going anywhere. You can use napkins, scrapbook paper, and just regular old loose scrapbook papers are fine. If you're going to use a stamp, you're also going to need a stamp pad. And then you want some of this ephemera. Use beads, pearls, jewels, whatever you have laying around. Ribbons, assorted ribbons. I also tore this up to make even smaller laces because for this project you can see these boxes aren't that big. You You'll need scissors. You're, if you're using ribbon you're going to need cloth or material scissors. Small scissors because we're working with a small area. I always use a nail file to file off any of those rough ends of the paper. Large scissors probably. This is a very, very high gloss top coat. This is not decoupage glue. As long as you have what's called a neutral pH, which is acid free, I believe, glue. And if your Elmer's or household glue says that it's acid free, we want to go with that. I'm using this as opposed to decoupage glue. This is some fabric glue. If you would like glitter or mica, this gives it more of an old world feel. We're going to need some gesso. And I'd like to recommend that you use one of these smaller brushes because again, we're working in such a small space, the big sponge brush can get a little cumbersome if you're trying to get into the small spaces inside or around. And the other thing that came in very handy is one of these cutters because you can make an exact cut. So that's the first thing that I'd like to recommend that we do. You're also going to need, this is a very used container of glue. <laughs> You're going to need an uh, all-purpose type of glue. Just make sure that it says that it holds glass or metal, ceramic. It's got to be a little bit more heavy duty than just a regular Elmer's if we're going to put pieces of metal or shells, you could have small shells, pieces of jewelry, uh, anything that you'd like to add on there. You need a stronger glue. The first thing you'll want to do if you're using a coffee filter or a napkin as your base, you'll be able to see right through it. So you'll want to coat the box in gesso. I coated this two times. Now I'm using scrap paper, which is very thick and nothing is going to show through that, so I don't need to do that. If you have to cover your box with gesso, do that now. And if you don't, 
You want to take the piece of scrapbook paper that you're using and decide which part of it you like and just turn it over and trace the size that you need and I would do that for the top, the bottom, and the inside. Now if you want to keep the sides open you'll want to trace over just a smidge and I mean just about there. You don't have to get too carried away because if you overlap it like that much on top and bottom as long as you've got a place to, sorry about that as long as you've got a place to still strike the match you're okay. And I am sorry I forgot to tell you that you need something to trace with so either a pen or a pencil and I'm just going to go a little bit over on the sides. So I'm going So you can see that overlaps just the tiniest bit. And this is where we'll take the adhesive. Let's put a little dot on there, dollop. Let's take out that inside. If you're working with the scrapbook paper from inside of one of those booklets of scrapbook paper, it is pretty thick. And while that provides great coverage, it could be very challenging to work with. So what I would suggest is you take a cloth, wet the back of this and take a cloth, I'll show you. And this is a wet rag. It's actually saturated, which is a good thing. You want to get it wet. Now, can you see how this paper starts to peel away? I pressed on that a little too hard, so that's something you don't want to do. It's not like cardboard now. It's just very easy to work with. Just want to be careful not to do that or that. But if you work on a long strip, you'll have a long enough strip to work with that'll just go around your matchbox. All right. You see, you can squash these boxes. That's why I took the center out. You can work on the other side while you're letting this dry. It is much easier to just go around the whole box and cover it. But I wanted to show you how we can do this where the side is open so that you can strike the match. I will do the other side. Just repeat the process over here. Now once the paper's in place, and I've got both sides open, you'll want to take your ribbons and see where you would like to place them. You, you can fool around with this, but you still have to place the paper on the inside. Now I like to make these sides longer or these cuts longer than I need them. So I'll put this aside to dry. If you would like to add glitter or mica, right now is the time to do that. And you would just layer, put a, put a layer of the same adhesive that you're using over the top and shake the glitter on, put it aside to dry, and then when it's dry, come back 
and that's where you would use that high gloss spray that's going to secure the glitter on there it's still going to be just as fiery I do know what I'm going to do with my decoration so I'm going to do that now And that is now on there securely. We'll go over to this bottom piece. Now I'm just going to cut the edge off. And if you have any leftover, any edges, that's where you can take that nail file and just go around and file it off. You don't need to do anything to the sides or the underneath the bottom of the inside because those will be hidden. You can add an embellishment to the outside. These very easily open and close and that's how we look on the inside. These open and close very easily but if you would like to another little trick that you can do is this is a very small area and I found trouble, I've had trouble finding something tiny enough. There are beads, but even that it's more decorative, you wouldn't be able to use it as a pole. You can put a brad here. And you can also take a little ribbon and glue it on the inside or the outside so that you've got a little pull there. And that is how you take a matchbox from this to this. Once again, thank you guys so much for subscribing. I really appreciate that. And I honestly do love to hear your questions or read your questions and comments. I'm all too happy to help you out. And some of you guys that make comments a lot, thank you so much. I feel like you guys are my friends now. <laughs> I hope you feel like that too. You can um, ask me whatever you'd like. I'll do what I can to help you out. And I will see you in another week. Bye-bye.